Secondly, take your time when it comes to the Quran. That is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah addresses all mankind saying, O oh people, indeed a reminder or a warning has come to you from your maker and a cure for the diseases of the heart. One of them is sadness. It's a disease. It is what lies in the chest. Sadr actually means the chest. Some would refer to the heart because it is inside the chest. But anything in your chest, when sadness is felt, where is it felt? People put their hands on the chest, you know, I'm sad. It's not like it's in the chest, but it's the feeling, it's man, it's the nature of man. You say, I'm so sad. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us overcome sadness. So you want to overcome it? Remember the Quran is the remedy. How many of us take our time? Listen carefully. Wallahi, this is a remedy. Take our time to happily, gladly open the Quran. That is the word of Allah every morning before we leave the home and read even five minutes of your time so happily. And we read the Arabic. We try to perfect it. We try to improve as the days pass. We read melodiously. Did you know? that there are two ways of reading the Quran. One is just to read it as though you, you're reading a book. And the other is to read it, to try and put in to it some melody for the sake of Allah. It is a melodious recitation. It is tartil. It is to be intoned in a certain way. So try it. Don't be shy. When you say Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Ar Rahman Ar Rahim. Yes, these are powerful words of Allah. But try saying Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Ar Rahman Ar Rahim. See what it does to you. It's different. It's the word of Allah. Do it for the sake of Allah. Wallahi, this is a remedy for your sadness. When you give the Quran, the word of Allah, the importance it is supposed to be having, it combats your sadness without you realizing. You're a happy person. People look at you. You have bigger problems than all of them put together, but you are smiling. You still say, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah. People think you've got no issue. There is nobody on earth who has no issue. Remember that. It's just the way they are managing and coping is different. You think you have a problem. Wallahi, there are people sitting right near you in the same masjid that perhaps have problems a hundred times the size of yours, but you won't realize it. They have a link with Allah. They know this world is temporary. That brings me to another point. Once you've developed your link with the Quran and you try to read and you try to understand and you try to put things forth and you develop a link with Allah and your dhikr, remembrance of Allah is in order. Your salah is in order. You need to be able to appreciate what Allah has given you that he has not given others. That is one way of combating your sadness. The hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu he says, Unzuru ila man huwa dunakum. Look at those who have less than you, who are lower than you. You know, I was speaking to a brother. You might laugh at what I'm about to say, but I want to show you what we become sad regarding. Petty things, minor things. Brother says, I'm very sad. Why? Because I don't have hot water at home. People don't have water, let alone hot water. Really? And you are sad because you don't have hot water. So I met him one week later. I said, how is your problem, my brother? He said, which problem? I said, the one that broke your back. So he was saying, what do you mean? I said, you know, in the Quran, Allah speaks about problems that almost break the backs of people. When the Prophet ﷺ had a problem, it was not connected to him or his dunya. It was connected to the deen, the religion. That's why I said, you ask yourself a question. Is this matter related to the deen or the dunya? The matter I am sad about is it, if it's connected to the deen, then yes, it is a matter I should be sad about. I, I combat it in a similar way. But if it is connected to the dunya or this life, then I need to know number one, life is temporary. Days do not last. It will not be the same. After nightfall comes day and after day comes night. Remember that that's the plan of Allah. So I, the brother tells me, what was it? I said, you complained. You said you are very sad because you didn't have hot water. He said, no, I have hot water, but I'm still sad. Why? Because the water is trickling from the shower. It's not come. It's hot, but it's very little that comes out. It's not much. And I'm thinking, subhanAllah, my brother, people don't have water. 
people have water that is not hot now you have hot you have water and you have hot water but you are still sad it shows you are connected to something material that is very temporary remember this a lot of us are sad because of something temporary you lost wealth everybody's lost wealth nobody seated here has not suffered a loss everybody has they've dealt with it differently they've suffered at different levels Allah tests you according to your level in one narration the hadith says Allah tests you according to how much he loves you when he loves you more he tests you more that's a hadith it's because when you have a problem and an issue it is human nature that when you have a problem you start looking for solutions and a believer will look for solutions by getting close to Allah so when Allah wants you to become very close to him, he gives you a bigger problem because he knows if you didn't have this one major issue in your life, perhaps you wouldn't even be bothered about reading Salah. You wouldn't even be bothered about calling out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah says, you know what? Think about those who have less so you can appreciate what you do have. So I said, my brother, take a bucket, fill the bucket with the water. When you are ready, you take a little pan and then you can bath out of the pan. He says, I didn't think of that, but it's so inconvenient. Look, when you want to be sad, then you look for sadness, even when there's happiness glaring you in your face. You need to know this. So don't be sad. My brother, there is a solution. You have water, Alhamdulillah, learn to bath with cold water. It is more healthy. Go and read about the health aspects of bathing with cold water. I'm not saying we should force ourselves, but it will help you the day there is no hot water. And then, you don't need to keep showering every day with full force shower. You, all you need is you need to be able to have a little bit of water that you can do your ghusl and your bath. Fill it in a bucket. Learn the bucket challenge. When people spoke about it, they were wasting water. With us, we've been doing that bucket challenge ever since we were born. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deep understanding. You save water and there is barakah. Perhaps Allah wants to show you. People complain, you know what? We only have electricity for three hours a day. There are nations that have not seen electricity for months on end. What about that? Thank Allah you have it for three hours. You have an inverter, you have a generator. Stop complaining. These tests are far easier than those who are being bombed and aerial bombing on a daily basis. Do you agree? Why then do we say I'm sad? So the whole world will be sad. Who is going to thank Allah? You cannot say I am sad because Allah has taken away something material from me. You have to say Alhamdulillahi ala kulli hal. I praise Allah upon all conditions.